Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. I'm so glad you're there. So I wasn't sure if this show would ever come together. It's been in the works for some time. I am truly honored to have the opportunity to review this turntable. This may very well become my new favorite. We've reviewed the Fluence RT80, which is their entry level. And now we review the RT85 with the brand new Nagaoka cartridge. Not that cartridge isn't brand new, but it's brand new Fluence RT85 with the Nagaoka cartridge edition. It's a brand new Fluence iteration of the RT85. It is their flagship model coming in retail price of $500. And so this is, you know, in my realm, the entry level realm, the getting your toe into the mid range realm, this is pretty high end stuff. So I'm humbled, honored, very, very excited. I've done my homework, I've done my research, and I'm very excited to lay eyes on this turntable and then give it a good listen. So we're gonna do a complete unboxing and review of this beautiful brand new RT85. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Recordology. Before we get started, I want to invite you to join us over on TikTok. There's a link in the description below. We play records, we just show unique stuff in a fun and different way, and we're having a lot of fun over there. I try to use that, same thing with our Instagram, I use that as a way to bring people to this channel, but for those of you that are already here on the channel, go check it out. It's really, really cool. We have a lot of fun over there. Also, I want I meant to mention this in the intro, but we are actually, I got some news coming up. Something very exciting is, is coming our way very shortly. It'll be entertaining for you, it'll be fun, and it's happening real soon. So stay tuned um, to the end of the show, and I will tell you exactly what's going on. I'm excited to share that little bit of news with you. And also, if you're not a subscriber yet, and you're just checking this video out, video out, and you want to see other videos like it, then uh, hit subscribe. That would be cool. Give us a thumbs up. Hit the bell notification. We do a lot of stuff throughout the week. You're not going to want to miss that. We also have a membership program, which you can get an extra show a week as well. All right, so this, it, it, this is the RT85 NT in black, piano black finish. This is brand spanking new. Okay, so here we go, the big reveal. I am just excited because, to me, Fluence so far has been... Very impressive with their quality, attention to detail. I know that the reference line of turntables from these guys are highly regarded. So we've got a list of all the stuff that's inside. This has some very unique features and accessories and things that I am just excited to share with you guys. And the only reason why I know about them is I, I researched this. And I, re I read a lot about it before... I started filming this video because a lot of times we're sort of in an exploratory discovery mode when we're doing these unboxings. And I thought it would be nice just to, for me to come prepared, you know, in, in a way for once with all of the information. So, you know, we can kind of talk in, uh, you know, descriptive detail and, you know, having a full understanding of what, what it is we're looking at, why it, why it is the way it is. You know, it's going to be good if they include gloves. That's really cool. I don't think I've... Have we reviewed a turntable that came with gloves? Keep in mind, the most expensive turntable that we have reviewed to date is the LP7, which is a nice turntable, but you don't get the, you don't get the sense that it is a personalized, you know, experience. It's just really nice, and, it you know, it works really well, but it's it feels like it's another one off the assembly line, if that makes any sense, whereas this feels like more of a... An experience. I don't know if that makes any sense. Let's go ahead and lift this guy out and set that aside. We've got more accessories in the box. Ooh, that's going to be the platter. I heard it has a three pound acrylic platter and that's it for the box. So let me kind of get organized here and we'll take a look at what is included. Okay, so we've got everything unpacked and ready to assemble. And this video, I'm gonna really focus on making it review focused, not instruction or tutorial based. So some of the things like balancing the tone arm, we're probably not gonna go into a lot, whole lot of detail. 
But I want to just review the experience for you and give you a virtual experience of having one of these. And, you know, if you're considering it for purchase or you just want to see what it would be like. So they give you these uh, soft gloves because that, even though it looks white, is truly piano black. It's wrapped up in protective materials. So to keep your fingerprints off of stuff and the dust cover as well, they give you gloves, which is a nice touch. Now, this turntable does not have a built-in preamp. The mid and upper range Fluence line do not include a preamp. The idea is that there is no electronics between the cartridge and your preamp. So you don't have any introduction of distortion or anything that could color the sound. So it is truly neutral. That is the idea. Um, as such, though, you do need a, a grounding wire. If you don't have an RCA cable that has one, they provide a very nice insulated gold-tipped cable and a grounding wire. Sometimes they, these are combined into one, but in this case, it's separated out. We have the power supply, which is a DC power supply. However, this features a very high-end DC motor that's servo-controlled which means that the speed is self-tested at a rate of 500 times per second to ma and adjusted. So it basically maintains a very accurate speed with a servo control. It's monitoring itself and making adjustments. Uh, that's going to be exciting because you'll never have to adjust the speed. There is the tone arm counterbalance. It is a brushed kind of matte finished metal with a plastic dial. They do include a bubble level so that you can make sure your turntable is on a level playing surface. We have plastic clips for the dust cover. We have a plastic 45 adapter. It is not bottom of the barrel, <laughs> which I'm thankful for. This is sort of next level up. An aluminum one would have been a nice touch. I'll be upgrading that immediately. What is this, you may say? No, that's not another adapter to play Seabergs. This is actually a cover for the motor, which, by the way, is decoupled from the plinth. And that is, it's isolated. I think that's really, really cool. All right, so here it is, guys. This is the piece de resistance. This is the Nagaoka MP110 moving magnet cartridge. And this is really, really special. This represents an upgrade from the entire Fluence line. They featured the Ortifon red and blue, 2M red and 2M blue, which are fantastic cartridges, as well as some Audio Technicas on the lower end turntables. But this is now the flagship representation for Fluence. So they've got a nice new shiny cartridge. This MP110 in the Nagaoka line, this is about $149 cartridge if you were to buy it by itself. The stylus, which is the yellow, is, it was part of the yellow housing there. I love these little finger indents on the side. It's got a good feel if you were to pull that cartridge or stylus off. The stylus replacement is about 63 some odd dollars. It is an elliptical. I believe it is 0.7 by 0.4. And it is a polished brushed uh, diamond that is bonded to an aluminum cantilever. And it comes in a Fluence head shell. You can also buy a Nagaoka matching head shell on their website, but this is uh, the Fluence one that comes with it, and a standard half-inch mount. As you can see, there's no exposed wire there. Everything is insulated. They use a very high-end oxygen-free uh, wire compound to connect for the, for the tone arm itself. So that goes from the head shell through the tone arm. So I'm excited to give this a listen. These are handmade in Japan. And I'm just super, super excited. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. If you look at the Nagaoka store on Amazon, you'll see that this is sort of their one step up from the bottom. They have one that's a conical, and this is their base elliptical, and they go up from there hundreds and hundreds of dollars, obviously. But everything, based on what you can see of the design and the specifications, their range is very close to one another. So even this being, you know, on their lower end of the range should be you know, not too far off of their higher end. So I'm super excited. All right, I'm going to finish unpackaging some of these things and we'll start putting this together. I do want to mention the manual. So let's take a look at this. It looks like it's got a pretty robust, glossy page manual of actual photos and um, specifications, which comparatively to other turntables in this range, this thing specs out 
very nicely. It's also got the Fluence catalog. We've looked at this before. Obviously, their turntable range and speakers as well. So super cool. That's fun to flip through from time to time. And back in the corner, you can see the acrylic platter. We'll take a look at that in a minute, as well as the dust cover and the turntable itself. Okay, let's go ahead and remove the plastic overwrap. This does feature a solid wood plant that isn't MDF, but it's a solid MDF. We've got a silica packet there. I'm gonna put the gloves on now because I don't wanna, you know me and fingerprints and dust particles. It's, a, it's much better if I feel like Mickey Mouse. I just need those like circles on there and it'd be Mickey Mouse gloves. Um, it'd be much better if I have the gloves on. I don't wanna, I don't wanna unnecessarily fingerprint it up. And this is sort of a nice fabric protective. Oh, 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 would you look at that? It is pretty. It is very, very pretty. It is a mirror finish. Holy moly, you guys. Oh, wow, that is beautiful. Piano black, smooth as glass. Wow, this thing is phenomenal. This is beautiful. I thought it'd be fun too, we put it side by side with the RT80, which is their entry level, just to see kind of form factor wise how they stack up. So we'll do that after we get it all put together. Um, I wanna be very careful about how I handle this. I don't wanna just start flipping it around, scratch up the side. So let me set up a shot where we're gonna look at the bottom of it and the back of it as well. Okay, so here is the bottom side of it. It uses these pointed silicone feet which do have a pivot and I think they're possible. No, I don't think they're adjustable. They don't need to be because it's three point, but there is some play there. There is kind of a hardened rubber. You can see sort of a fiberboard panel that's uh, painted black on the bottom. So there's a shot of kind of what else is there. Not a whole lot going on there. So we'll pair it with a good external preamp. These are therefore going to be outputting phono voltage, which is lower than line level. There's the grounding post. It does have an auto stop function, which is nice, and the 12 volt power supply in there as well. And while we're in this vicinity, let's take a look at this motor. This thing is amazing. It is, like I said, decoupled from the plinth. So there are silicone mounts and things that are dampening it. And then this little metal cover here will go right over the top just to make, give it you know, a nice appearance once we get the belt on there and all that good stuff as well. Let's rotate it around and look at the control dial. Whew. It's nice to have these gloves because I can just sort of dust as I go. So there is the knob. It's a metal machine knob. It feels very tight. This little dot does light up. The Fluence branding on the front is just gorgeous, you guys. I wish it was three speeds. I wish it was three speeds, dang it. That would be awesome. Let's look at the main bearing. Okay, so the main bearing, interesting, has some drag on it, and I believe that's done because the mass of the platter, being acrylic, is gonna be fairly heavy. So this needs to match that in order for the turntable to maintain the proper, you know, sort of inertia and momentum. If this was too loose, it may have a hard time fighting against the uh, variables of the motor itself. And like we've talked about before, the reason why you want a heavy platter is so that you have mass inertia to overcome those speed fluctuations. And let's look at the tone arm. The tone arm is an S-shaped tone arm. It is aluminum. We are going to have the counterbalance on here. Let's see, does that screw on or? Yep, so that, oh, yeah. So we're gonna set that. This cartridge, is designed to operate at 1.5 to 2 grams and people recommend running it at about 1.8 so i'll use my digital scale to make sure that we have that done i'll take care of this um, plastic clip and somebody told me i was complaining about plastic clips the other day they like, you know my rt85 has a plastic clip or that maybe it was their uh, techniques 1200 sl has a plastic clip so i just kind of par for the course it does have an anti-skate adjustment which will set at the same value as, as the cartridge. So just under two out of the box, and we can refine that later as needed. It's got a cueing lever and then a lift shelf there with a nice rubber lining. 
And this is great because this is an S-shaped tone arm, we can use a straight head shell assembly. So I could run the Ortofon series on here, the, Con the Concords, which I love those things. And uh, it makes it a lot easier versus something like the LP3, which has the angled head shell. This will kind of open up our options. So, okay, now let's go ahead and put the platter on and get the belt attached. It's amazing how shiny that is. It just looks like a mirror. Okay, so this uses an acrylic platter. This is, I think it's a three pound platter. It is slightly yellowed, I notice. It's, it, it looks clearer to the eye than it does on camera, but there is a, a faint um, sort of yellowness to it. There is a little inset here, so records with a protruding label can lay flush. And the bottom side has a completely flush surface. And it's intended to go the other way, but I suppose you could possibly do it this way because that uh, bearing receptacle, I believe, is not tapered. I, I believe that is a, an actual shaft. And it just rests right on the main bearing like this. Interesting that they've left... Man, that looks good. That looks really good. Interesting they've put the belt on there to begin with. And attaching the belt is very simple, which I'll show you in a second. And that's it. We don't need a slip mat. We don't need any anything on here. And a lot of people freak out about the acrylic. They're like, wait a minute, acrylic, that's the worst thing. A hard, smooth surface. It's actually one of the best things you can do for your records because acrylic has very similar resonance properties to vinyl itself. And when you put a PVC vinyl record on an acrylic mat, they become one in the same. The heavy weight, the mass of this helps with speed consistency and the mass inertia so that you don't have any sort of fluctuations from the motor. Although with this being servo controlled, you wouldn't anyway. But the resonance properties of the platter and the vinyl record become one because they essentially are perfectly fitted sonically to each other and you can benefit that basically it means that your record gets to benefit from the sonic properties of the entire platter, not just what's above the, the slip mat, as it were. So, okay, let's go ahead and gently rotate this around. Now, this is starting to get quite heavy. It definitely feels like, you know, we're, we're doing something substantial. Let's get a closer shot down here, and we'll go ahead and attach that belt. This thing is so pretty. All right, I'm going to try and do this with my gloves. And done. But you know what? Let's put on that cover first. And put this guy on right here. Kind of snaps in the, it doesn't feel like it's in there right. Hmm. Well, there's probably a notch. I think there's, because there's an arrow there. So I wonder if, okay, the arrow and the arrow. Okay, that, that would make sense. So there's a lip. This is the kind of stuff I screw up. So now that's seated roughly. I wonder why they don't just put that on at the factory. And the belt goes in there. It's a nice channel for the belt so it doesn't slip off. And if you notice, that shaft in there is tapered a little bit, I believe. It is. So it bulges out in the middle and is sort of narrower at the top and bottom. That helps that belt stay positioned appropriately. And I've seen that even like cheap motors do that. So it's kind of an interesting thing. You'll notice just like the U-turn, there's no channel on the platter itself but it is a flat belt. It'll do just fine. It won't come off of there. I think it'll be just fine. So let's go ahead and put the dust cover on and see what the finished product looks like. This is kind of cool having these gloves. I'll probably keep these in my office just so I have something to handle these turntables with without getting fingerprints all over it. Okay, so here is the dust cover. Yes, it's a smoked dust cover. You guys know I love a smoked dust cover. It's got nice tapered edges. This will most assuredly be a polycarbonate, so susceptible to scratches. It does have rubber feet there to sort of dampen the raising and lowering. I'm actually a little surprised. It was really hard to get those clips on. They felt like they, I felt like I was going to chip the dust cover. It was really a tight fit, so a little worrisome there, but we should be good now. And there she is, guys. That is a gorgeous turntable if I ever saw one. Absolutely beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. 
All right, let's look at the RT80 next to this. Let's look at their bottom of the line and their top of the line side by side. I'm actually surprised they're closer than I thought they would be. It looks like they have a, the tone arm and everything looks very, very similar. And even the cartridge looks similar because I think that's an AT91, and which is the same thing that comes on an LP3, but not this isn't the red version. And then this obviously has the uh, MP110. But man, they look kind of similar. Don't, by the way, it doesn't come with that lit mat. That's a Hudson Hi-Fi lit mat. If you want one of those, I guess I'll put a link down below too. Those are cool. They look really good on, on black like that. It looks really, really cool. I love the RT80, by the way. This is like 100 and sub 200, and this is $500 range. Does it live up to the height? Is it you know really any different? Time will tell. Uh, we're going to give it a sound test here in a little bit. These are both belt-driven. This uses a more standard belt mechanism that's under the platter. This is an aluminum platter, whereas this obviously has the external servo controlled, much higher end motor. But you know, the power, you know, selector switch, everything, the branding, a lot of it looks similar. The head shell, I think is the same head shell. The tone arm is beefier on this one for sure, but this gimbal looks the same. The counterbalance looks just about the same. This mount, looks the same. By the way, there's no adjustable VTA. Uh, the anti-skate adjustment looks the same. The dust covers essentially look the same. The clips look the same. So it's really interesting. It's kind of, again, like U-turn, where you get pretty much their high-end turntable, even if it's their entry-level unit, which is a good thing. That's a very good thing. I feel like when a company's low-end is very close to their high-end. So, all right, you guys. What are we gonna do next? I am going to dethrone the LP3 for the time being in, in my office where is also my listening room, audio, whatever. And I am going to connect this. I'm gonna pair it with a preamp, which I'll tell you about in a minute. And we are going to give it a good in the room, he listen, hearing <laughs> with my Fluon speakers. And we'll do a direct feed test as well. I have it set to just under 1.8 grams which actually it's nailed 1.8 grams. So this is going to be the most ideal tracking force from the research that I did. This cartridge is pre-aligned at the factory. We've got everything connected. It's time to spin up some vinyl. Okay guys, so, so much has happened since the last clip and this clip. Basically, I spent the whole afternoon filming and recording and having some annoying distortion that I couldn't pinpoint and I just couldn't imagine was coming from the turntable. I ended up pinning it down to a bad preamp. So I went with the first gen Pluto preamp from U-Turn. Somewhere around here, I've got a second gen. Specs out a little bit higher. Is black, it matches this one a little bit better. But it, this one is sounding fine. I also listened to a variety of records. You need to burn these in, you know, to pull them out of the box and just expect them to work, you know, immaculately is is a bit much. So you, you're expected to burn them in about 10 hours. So we are going to be playing track number two, Samba de Orfeo. We're going to start off with an ambient in the room sound test in stereo. And you're going to be hearing my Fluence powered speakers. Then we're going to transition midway through the song into a direct feed right off the preamp. Thank you. 
just for fun, check the accuracy of that servo controlled motor. We'll be looking right here. And as you can see, she is pretty dang accurate. Switch to 45 and there'll be that secondary band. Yep, that looks pretty dang good. Okay, so what are my thoughts? Final thoughts. It sounds really good. Uh, that cartridge has a neutral yet warm tone. It's not quite as warm as a Grado, but it's warmer than like an Audio Technica and you know far warmer than an Ortofon to my ears. Uh, it sounded very accurate. The highs, the mids, the lows, everything was there. I think the hardware is good. Everything seems a good quality. I'm just excited about it, guys. It is a beautiful turntable. I think you guys would really, really enjoy it. And I wanna to listen to a lot of different music styles on it. We'll definitely be seeing more of this turntable on this channel. Before we get to the formal outro, I just wanna say I'm sorry for the weird lighting in some of these shots. Some days the incandescent lighting just shows up extra yellow, which is annoying. So my apologies there. Thank you for hanging out to the end. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek preview of what's coming up. I've got a live show planned in the imminent near future, next couple of days, where I'm going to be doing a challenge to get a mystery record that somebody has bought for me. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to really try to, I have to down, I have to consume something that will be hard to consume. So stay tuned to the channel for that. Hit the bell notification if you haven't done so already. It's going to be crazy. I'm kind of nervous, but I wanted to let you know that was coming up. We're going to have a lot of fun with that. Okay, guys, and that is going to do it. No huge surprise. It is incredible. It is awesome, and I would highly recommend it. So link in the description below if you want to snag one for your very own. And if that is out of your reach right now, I totally get it, 100%. And uh, there's a lot of other options out there. There's so many choices. We reviewed everything from $25 five below record player all the way up to the $800 LP7 from Audio Technica and a couple of stops in between. So if you want to see more reviews, check those out to find the best turntable for you at this point in your vinyl journey. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you next time.